This conference will now be recorded. So in the previous session, we have discussed about profiles and we have discussed what exactly a profile and what is the use, what type of profiles are available in Salesforce and how to create the custom profiles we have discussed in the previous sessions and what kind of permissions that we can grant on the profiles we have listed out. And then yesterday we have discussed a few permissions, like how can we grant the permissions on applications, how to grant the permissions on tabs, what kind of settings that we have on the tabs we have discussed. And we have discussed about granting the permissions on objects and the operations also, what operation the user can do on each object we have granted the permission by using this set checkboxes and then we have discussed about the fields okay we have discussed theoretically and we'll see the practical concept today so basically by using this profile we can grant the permissions on the fields also that means what fields the user can access that we can decide like for example, assume that I have an account object. In my account object, I'm having so many fields are available, like the ID field, name field, rating, industry, annual revenue, type, ownership, phone number, fax number, and the account number also, parent account, website, billing address, shipping address, SLS, like that so many fields are available. Right now, these fields are visible to all the users available inside my organization. Now, my requirement is I would like to restrict some of the fields for few users, not to all. We can not to all. For few users, I would like to restrict the visibility of few fields. Now, in this case, what I want to do is for the development user, I don't want to grant the access to few fields. But for the rest of this development profile, for the other users, because these fields should be visible as it is. Other users can access these fields as it is, but only the development users, profile members, they can't access. Now, then how can we restrict the visibility of the fields? Okay, now let's say practically here. Now, make a note of this one. How can we grab this? By using this feature, we can restrict the visibility of the fields to the required profile users. Now, let's take a small use case. Configure the profile permissions for development user profile to remove the visibility of the below account object fields like account website name, that means website name. and the fax number and the phone field. Phone field and the fourth one, I would like to restrict the visibility of the field called as type field also, or the ownership. I want to remove that permission for these four fields okay, for the development user profile.
Done? Now, let's see how can we restrict the visibility of these fields for the development user profile. So whenever I'm removing the permissions from this particular object for your profile, so now if the profile is utilizing by the four users, all the four users will not be able to access. Okay, not only for this user, the people who are associated with this profile, all those people will not be able to access these fields. Now, let's see. Let me go to my Salesforce R. Now, let me go to that users. Go to that profile name okay, for which you would like to remove these permissions for this account object fields. I want to remove the permissions for the development user's profile. So that this is the profile name that we have. Go to that profile. So now get to go to that object level field level permissions. Go to that field level security. So now we can go to that object name. Okay, for which object fields you would like to remove the access? We can select that object name. For example, so these are the objects are available, including standard, including custom, all the object names it will populate over, including custom object fields also. Branch object, hiring manager, patient, position, all these object names you can see, including standard, including custom. Now my requirement is okay, for this profile users on account object, I would like to remove some of the fields permission. Let's go to the account object here. Click on view link. Now it is populating all the fields, whatever we have inside the account object. These are the fields. Now it is indicating the current status. Whether the user is having read access or not, write access or it is indicating for this user is the field is editable or readable or not both we can able to see now i would like to remove the permissions on some of the fields click on this edit button <laughs> now we can remove the permissions now let's see what fields you don't want to grant access website name fax number phone and the ownership now here we are having that fax number i want to remove the access just you can remove this access i'm unselecting the check boxes over here now if you want to grant only read access then you can grant only read access you can see the data that's it you can't modify anything now so i don't want to grant the permission on this field at all i'm removing the permission next phone field phone field, I'm removing the access. Next to one, ownership. Ownership field also, I don't want to grant the permission. Next website. Website field, I don't want to grant the access. So we have unselected the checkboxes. So now let's save it. So now from now onwards, for this the CIS Salesforce profile users, okay, in this account object, those fields will not be accessible. They can't see the fields at all. Okay. Now let's see the testing mechanism. Now this is currently this is the training batch user, that means administrator user. When the administrator user is going for this option, 
when the administrator is going for this account object, let's see. Go to the account object. Click on new button. You can see all the phone field is visible. Fax field is visible. Website is visible. Ownership also visible. So you can see all the fields information. Now, so now let's go to the development user account. Go to the users. Log into the development user account. Let's go to the account. Click on new button. So now he can't see those fields. The rating field is visible, annual revenue is visible. But it won't display the phone field, fax field, ownership field, website field will not be visible for this profile user. Okay, because we have removed the permission from this profile. So this profile user will not be able to access that. Clear? Now, next one. When you go to the other users available inside my Salesforce path, let's see. Let me go to the customer user now. When you click on this new button for the account object to create a new account card, you can see the phone field, fax field, website, ownership, they can see. That means the stop these profile users, all the other members can able to access, only these profile users will not be able to access that. Okay, so we can able to remove the permissions from the object also okay, on the fields okay, with the help of these profiles. So by using these profiles, we can grant the permissions on applications also, tabs also, objects also, operations on every object also, field level permissions also, everything we can able to grant. Okay, now. Understood the concept now? Next. The next one, page layout permissions. So by using this, we can decide for which profile users, okay, which page layout to be get accessible. That already we know the concept of page layout. What do you mean by page layout? Page layout provides a collection of graphical user interfaces. It provides a group of user interfaces through which we can perform the DML operations on your object cards. Like if you want to insert some records or updating some records, deleting some records, if you want to view the records, whatever the user interfaces are required, all those are available in the form of a bundle that is called as a page layout. Okay, now, so now tell me for one object, how many page layouts that we can have? Only one or multiple? Multiple also. Okay, your object can have one or more number of page layouts. By default, for every object, Salesforce is providing one page layout by default. Along with that, we can create some more additional page layouts also according to the requirement. So whatever the page layouts are required, we can create according to your application requirement as well. Now, so from those page layouts, which page layout should be visible to that profile users that we can control? We can decide for which profile users, which page layout has to be get visible by default that we can control that. For that reason, inside the profile level, we can grant the permissions on page layouts also. Then how can we do that? We can now, let's see. For example, if you want to grant the permissions on the page layouts, let's go to that profile level. Go to that user's profile. Now you will be having the first section, page layouts section. Now we can go to the object here, we can decide. So now for the account object, this what the page layout is, it is indicating account layout. You see the layout has been set by Salesforce by default. Now, if you want to apply your own page layout over here, then we can click on view assignment. Okay, click on view assignment here. Click on view assignment. Now here we are having an option called as Edit assignment button. Okay, edit assignment button. As part of the second object, we are having some set of page layouts. Salesforce is providing four page layouts for the account object by default. Like the first one, we are having this okay account layout, which is a standard one. 
Then second one, account marketing layout. Third one, account sales layout. Fourth one, account service layout. Okay, these are the four page layouts are available. If you want to see those page layouts, you can see that. These are the page layouts are available. So now account layout is the default one. Next one, support layout, sales layout, marketing layout. That means for the marketing people, they're going to be designing this marketing layout. So for the marketing people, whatever the fields are required, those fields are visible on that layout. They're designing this layout to those people's profile. Now for the sales people, what profile to be required? What are the profile is available? For that profile, they're indicating this sales layout. In this sales page layout, they're indicating what all the fields are to be visible for the sales people over here. Now, support layout. For the support people, what fields to be get visible that we can decide we can place those fields on this layout. This layout we can assign to the support team members over here. So it depends upon the requirement we can able to assign. Now, here we can assign that page layout also. Suppose, for example, here is your So now for this particular profile, Okay, CA, Salesforce profile, which page layout has been assigned account layout by default. If you want to assign the sales layout, just you can able to click on this. Now select the page layout over here. Select the page layout, the page layout will be getting selected. We can make it same. Suppose if you want to assign the same sales layout, sales layout for all the profiles, then in this case, just you can click on this column header. Click on this column header, all the profiles will be getting selected. Now we can able to assign your own layout whatever you want. So for all the profiles, we can able to assign. Okay, based on your business requirement, we can able to assign this. Clear? Understood the concept now? Now, the next one, general permissions, system permissions, administrative permissions and the custom permissions. As part of these permissions, okay, we require few permissions here. Two permissions are very, very important. The first one, other Apex permission. So what is the use of this other Apex permission generally? What do you understood with this word, other Apex permission? Then, what is this other Apex permission? Hmm. Sale out. Owner for what? For the Apex programming, okay, right? So, in this case, other Apex permission means what? So, now this permission will be granting the okay, ownership to the user. That means it is giving the permission to the user that this user can be an other of Apex class. That means other of Apex class means this user can create Apex classes. Generally, creating the Apex class permissions will not be available to all the people. If you want to grant the permission to these people that these people can build some Apex classes, then we can grant the permission other Apex permission. So other Apex permission will grant the permission to the user okay, that the user can able to create Apex classes also. If the user is not having this permission, that user can't create any Apex classes inside your Salesforce R. Simply they can able to access the configuration features, but they can't create any Apex classes also inside my Salesforce R. For that reason, we are having this permission called as other Apex permission. Okay, now let's see. Now in this case, it will grant the permission to the profile users to create Apex classes inside the organization.
Done? Next one. Bulk API, harder delete. So what do you mean by this permission? I hope already you are aware of that. Sir, under data loader, this is the seventh operation. No. So basically, this permission is required in order to remove the records okay, permanently from the Salesforce objects through data loader. Through data loader, whenever if you are trying to be deleting the records permanently without moving to the recycle bin, if you want to remove the records permanently, then we require the profile level permission called as bulk API hard to delete. Okay, if you are having this permission, then only we can remove the records permanently from the Salesforce subject without moving to the recycle bin. Okay, now. <coughs> Next one. Session settings. So if you want to check these permissions, other effects in the bulk API, just you can go to the profile. Let me show you where exactly it is. Done. So let's go to the user's profile. I'm going to the development user's profile. Click on edit button. Now search for the option, other effects. We can go to the browsers. We can search from the browser itself by using control F. Use the control F, it is indicating a search box over here inside the browser level. Now I'm searching for the option other effects. Okay, so there is an option is available other effects permission. So now this permission is used to grant the permission to the user. This development user also can create some effects classes. They can do some development activities also. For that reason, we are using other effects permission. This is one thing. Second one here we are having bulk API hard to delete. So now this permission is used to remove the records permanently from the Salesforce object through the data loader without moving to the recycle bin. Without moving to the recycle bin, we can remove the records permanently from your Salesforce objects at a time with the help of this permission, bulk API hard to delete. These two permissions are very, very important in the entry point of yours. Okay, to remove to perform the hard delete operation, what permissions are required? It's a common question in most of the interviews and in admin certification 201 also. Okay, so please remember these permissions. Like that, we have so many other permissions are also available over here, but all are not required based on the requirement. We can check the permissions from this list over here. Okay. Next one. So that we can configure the session settings also. What do you mean by session settings? What do you understand with the word session? Sir, uh, we session can. Uh, sir, we can stop force relogin while enabling the administrator uh, using login access policy. We need, we use this, sir. No. So what exactly the meaning of a session generally? Generally, session means the time duration between login and the logout. Okay, session means the time duration between the login and the logout. This period of time is called as session. Okay, this period of time is called as session. 
okay now for example our session will be having from 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock so this is a two hours of time this is called as a session now so in this case what exactly the session settings indicates in salesforce what is the use of this session settings now let me explain a small general scenario okay now for example i'm using a gmail application i'm using a gmail application i have logged into my application morning at nine o'clock okay morning at nine o'clock i have logged into my application i have accessed the application till okay 9 30. okay 9 30. i have accessed the application till 9 30. now at 9 30 i got a call okay i got an emergency call i have picked up the call it's an interview call so immediately i went outside i have given the interview over the phone so it's happened for around two hours. Okay, it's happened for around two hours. That means from 9.30 to 11.30, I have given the interview. So now at 11.30, I came back to my system. Okay, I came to my system. I came back to the system. So now when I click on this inbox option, what will happen? When you click on the inbox link, okay, in this particular system, in this Gmail application, it's 11 that is what will happen. Hmm. Session will be expired. That means what here? So now for two hours of time, I did not raise any request. I did not raise any request for the two hours of time. Generally, whenever we are building any application, it may be Java, Dartnet, Salesforce, wherever you go, any technology also, upon building the application, for every application, we are configuring the ideal time. We are configuring ideal time. Usually, this ideal time will be maximum of 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes. Depends upon your application requirement, we can set that time duration also. That means we can set that ideal time also based on your application requirement. If it is a banking application, okay, if it is a banking application, for example, I have swiped that card over here. I have entered the PIN number, so I have selected that option also. Okay, now the amount. And after that, when you click on that save button, it will be giving the money to me. But it did click on that save button, yes button. Then what will happen? Hmm. Within okay, 30 seconds of time, automatically it will be signing out that here. That means the session will be getting expired. Again, we have to swipe the card, enter the PIN number, you have to follow the same steps again. That means what for the banking systems, it will be having maximum of 50 seconds to 30 seconds, not for that. Because to avoid the fraudulent transaction, because to avoid the fraudulent transaction, they are avoiding this kind of problems. So definitely whenever we are building the applications, but these applications we are giving that ideal time as 20 minutes. And in Salesforce, there is a possibility how long time your system can be in idle state. That means without receiving any request, without receiving any request or without raising any request, how long time your Salesforce application will be in idle state so that we can decide. For that one, as part of the session settings, we can indicate how long time your system will be in idle state without raising any request to that Salesforce server. Okay, now. So it depends upon the business requirement we can configure. It may be 15 minutes also, 30 minutes also, one hour also, two hours also, four hours also, six hours also, 24 hours also depends upon the requirement we can able to configure the session settings also. Then where we can configure the session settings? Now let's see. Just you can go to the profile, click on this edit button. Click on this edit button. When you come down, you will be having a section called as session settings a section. Session settings a section. So now it is indicating. So now how long time your session will be in okay idle state? That means what? So now generally, whenever we are configuring some ideal time, by default for the Salesforce, it is giving two hours of inactivity. Okay, two hours of inactivity. 
within two hours of okay time if it did not make any request to the salesforce server automatically this session will be getting closed by the salesforce server when you click on that any link after two hours automatically it will redirect the user to the login screen so we have to re-login again and we have to submit the request again from there on okay so for that reason we are going to be indicating the idle time also for your sessions now so now here it is indicating that so now it is indicating the timings 15 minutes 30 minutes 1 hour 2 hours 4 hours 8 12 24 hours depends upon the requirement we can able to configure that. okay understood the concept now next one the next one we can configure the password policies so what do you mean by this the password policies hmm. sir nothing but password length uh, hmm. it should contain at least uh, eight characters okay, fine. Hmm. alpha numerical character and uh, numerical characters now so in this case basically Password policies are used to indicate how frequently the user has to change the password. Generally, for the banking systems, the banking people are always recommending to the people to change the password for every 45 days or for every 90 days or for every 60 days we can change the password because of the security reasons. Because of the security reasons. Now, in this case, whenever we are going to be indicating the password policies we can specify how frequently the user has to change the passwords like for every 30 days 60 days 90 days 120 days okay or it may be never expires or what we can indicate that now whenever if you're changing the password okay whenever if you're changing the password then how many characters should be there minimum inside the password password should have how many characters minimum what is the minimum length of the password that we can decide if the password is having more number of characters then password will be a bit strong because so now decoding that more number of characters will be very difficult for the people the combinations and permutations will be more so now in this case here that's what here to make that password strong they are going to be indicating how many characters we should have minimum for the password that we can decide minimum length of the password for this now whenever we are giving a new password okay whenever we are giving the new password then we can indicate so now the new password should not be equals to the previous three passwords or previous of five passwords previous of ten passwords that we can indicate generally when you go to the banking systems whatever the new password that we are going to set that password should not be equals to the previous of three passwords but in salesforce it can remember up to previous 24 passwords it can remember up to the previous 24 passwords that means your new password should not be equals to the previous 24 passwords okay up to that the salesforce can able to remember that we can decide how many previous passwords that salesforce can remember inside that we can decide and along with that whenever we are creating the new password what kind of okay complexity requirements will be getting possible that means what kind of characters to be allowed only numericals only characters, combination of alphanumerical values, combination of alphanumerical values along with the special characters, combination of alphanumerical values, special characters, in uppercase letters and lowercase letters both, we can decide what kind of characters to be get allowed in order to enter the password, we can specify. Next, we can indicate that, okay, we can indicate whenever the people are trying to be lagging to the application, how many how many invalid login attempts do we get allowed? Okay. Generally, when you go to the banking systems, we can decide that. Okay. They will be indicating three times here, three rank passwords. Okay. Three rank passwords. Fourth time, automatic account will get blocked for the next 24 hours. Like the similar way here, also we can decide how many invalid login attempts do we get allowed for the users that we can configure inside the profile level. Either three or either five or either 10 or no limit that we can decide here depends upon the requirements and then suppose for example if you tried more number of times with invalid passwords then automatically your account has to be get locked for how long time the account has to be get locked that we can decide so we can configure 15 minutes 30 minutes one hour or it will be until the administrator is resetting the password 
that we can decide over here. Now, after how long time that one will be in active status again here that we can configure. Okay, the effective that means the lockout effective period also we can configure all these settings we can do as part of password policies. By using this password policies, what kind of passwords to be get allowed we can able to indicate over here. Now, in this password policies section, we can decide user password expires in for every how many days they have to change the password. Default setting is 90 days. For every three months, you have to change the password of your Salesforce account. Okay. Now here we are having different options. 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 180, one year, never expires. Now tell me, so now have you faced any issue that Gmail is asking you to change the password? No. Gmail never asks you to change the password. That means same password we can able to use lifelong also. That means that password will not be getting expired because they will be setting that option as never expires. Okay, our password will not be getting expired so that we can continue to use that same password lifelong as well. Now, but in Salesforce, I would like to use that 90 days. Now, enforce password history. How many pre previous passwords that the Salesforce can remember? By default, it is having three. Now we can able to configure till 24. Depends upon the requirement we can configure. So your new password cannot be equals to the previous 24 passwords. Now, password minimum length. How many characters do we get allowed minimum for the password okay, that we can decide? Next, password complexity requirement. What kind of characters do we get allowed inside that password? Upon giving the new password, password should have alphanumerical characters, special characters also, along with uppercase and lowercase letters also. Because to make that password strong. Okay, now. Next one. So in maximum invalid attempts that we can specify. So we are having three, five, ten, no limit. If it is the banking system that's setting either three, few banks are setting as five. Okay, now. But when you go to the Gmail, do we have any limitation over here? No, it will be having no limit option. Okay, depends upon the requirement we can specify here. Then number of times we can try with invalid passwords. Now, lockout effective period here. Generally, if you are entering the three times bank account pin number as wrong, automatically your account will be locked for the next 24 hours. Like the similar way my sector sales for second will be getting locked. For how long time it is indicating that? 15 minutes, or 30 minutes, or 60 minutes, or forever. Until or unless your administrator is not resetting the password, so now you can't change that password again, you can't try again to it. Okay, now. Like that, we can able to configure that key information also as part of this password policies. Clear? Understand the concept now? Next one. We can specify what Apex classes the user can access that we can indicate inside the profile level itself. So when you go to the profiles, we can verify. Now, here also we are having what Apex classes the user can access that we can decide, that we'll see in development sessions. During the development part, we'll see. Once you click on this edit button, whatever the Apex classes that are prepared, all the class names will be getting populated over here. From this one, we can select the classes at which you would like to grant the permission to these users. Now, and then we can grant the permissions on Visual Force pages also. What Visual Force pages this user can access that we can decide. Here also we can grant the permission. So, Visual Force pages. We can select the Visual Force pages which we have configured and then we can grant the permissions also. That facility will be available to you. And the next one, these are all are related to development and integration part. Now we have two more login IP ranges and login hours. Let's see what do you mean by this login IP ranges and login hours. Now let's see. Okay, now basically. Lagging IP ranges are used to restrict the Salesforce application to be accessible, okay, to be accessible within the specific network, network IP range only. Like for example, come to a small scenario. Assume that I'm working as okay, a bank employee. Okay, I'm working as a bank employee. I'm working in some ICSA bank. Okay, now as a cashier or a government bank, also anything. 
So now every day I'm going to the bank branch and then I'm using my counter. I'm accessing my credentials. We are accessing our bank application. We are serving to our customers. Today, I'm not feeling well. I would like to take work from home. Can I inform to my manager, send all the customers to my home so that I will serve to those customers here? No. Why? Because bank application cannot be accessible from outside of the bank branch. Because within the bank branch, they're having a LAN network is available, local area network is available here. So now that local area network will be having some range that is called as IP address range is available. So upon building that banking application, they have restricted that application. Application can be accessible within the bank branch only because within the bank branch, they're having a secure network is available. They're having their own firewall protection systems are available, which will be keep on protecting their bank systems from the unauthorized people, from the hackers also, from the malicious software also, from the malware also, it will be protecting the banking systems okay, from the unauthorized fraudulent transactions so that bank application will be accessible within the bank branch only because the bank network will be having very restricted network here. they're using latest versions of okay firewalls also they're using latest versions of anti-virus systems also which will be keep on identifying the latest viruses also it will be preventing those viruses to be get attacked on the bank systems so that if the bank data will be getting protected from the another is the people from the viruses as well so that if I'm accessing the application from my home, then my home network may not be that much of secure. I'm not using any firewalls. I'm not having any antivirus systems inside my local device. So because of that here, yeah, because of that, so now the virus will be directly attacking on the system. It will be correcting your bank, bank data also. Because generally, if you're using some antivirus systems inside the device, the system performance will be getting slow. So that's what here we are disabling that antivirus systems also. Okay, now, so for that reason, there will be some chances to attack on the bank systems so that it will be corrupting the bank data as well. To avoid those kind of problems, the restricting the application can be accessible within the bank branch only. Like the similar way, okay, like the similar way when coming to my organization. I'm having my own Salesforce application. Now my Salesforce application can be accessible within my organization network only, within my company only, not from outside of my company. So our project employees don't have any work from home facility. Compulsorily, they have to come to our office, they have to work from the office. Only. So in this case, simply we can able to restrict the application can be accessible within our organization network itself by using the login IP ranges. We can specify the starting IP address, ending IP address also we can able to configure. Okay, clear now. So in this case, just we can go to your profile you will be having this option login IP ranges. Click on new button, specify the IP address range. Like for example, I'm indicating zeros and then 255. So like for example, this is like as the SR Nagar branch. Now click on save. If you're having one more branch over here, then you can add one more. Multiple IP ranges also we can able to add for a single profile. Click on new button again, add one more. Okay, add one, like as some big update branch. So we have to collect that IP ranges here by from the network administrator people. IP ranges will be configuring by the network administrator people. That is not our job. We need to collect that system's IP ranges and we need to configure inside the profile level. That's it. Okay, based on the starting IP address, ending IP address, we can able to configure based on the branch. So this application can be accessible from this both the branches also. So like that, in future, if we're introducing some more branches, we can add those branch IP ranges also inside the profile level. Okay, clear? Next one. The last option is login hours. Okay, login hours. So what do you mean by this login hours option? What did you understood with this option login hours? Sir, how many times? How many times you have to log in? Specific timings, okay, right? Hmm. That means here, for example, assume that we are having the banking systems. Okay. When coming to the bank, bank timings are Morning at some eight o'clock to evening four o'clock. 
ke four ke liye age of that my bank timings are morning 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock so okay, it's for the private bank not for the government banks here because government bank people will coming by 11 o'clock so the bank will start with 10:30 they will come by 11 okay now so now in this case so now in this case so we are having this private banks so the timings are from morning 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock now for example age of so i'm a bank manager okay i'm a bank manager so now since two years i'm working at the bank so every day i'm going to the bank i'm serving to my customers whenever a customer has applied for a loan every loan application requires my approval as a bank manager it requires my approval without my approval we can't disperse the amount for that okay customer so since the last three days i was in vacation because of some health issue, I was in leave for the last three days. So, so many requests are in waiting status. So many approvals are in pending. So much of my work is in pending status. Now, so that today, okay, I thought of I would like to go to the bank by morning at six o'clock. I will go to the bank morning at six o'clock so that my bank will be starting by eight o'clock. So, within two hours of time, I can complete some of my pending tasks. So, now tell me, can I go to the bank by six o'clock? No, even though if you go to the bank by six o'clock, your bank application cannot be accessible because bank application has been restricted in such a way application can be accessible during a certain period of time only from so and so time to so and so time only we can able to make it accessible. So the bank application has been completely restricted to access the application between certain period of time only from morning 8 o'clock to okay 4 o'clock only we can able to access that bank application even though if i'm going to the bank morning at 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock also i can't access the banking system the bank application can be accessible from 8 o'clock onwards only. okay clear now so in this case before 8 o'clock we can't access after 4 o'clock we can't access the banking system so because they have restricted the applications like for example so I think you know a feature called as Tapkal facility in order to reserve that train tickets. Okay. So now general tickets you can able to book at any point of time also. Okay. But from night 11:42, okay, morning 12:20 will be the okay that was server will not be worked because that will be the maintenance time. Okay. For every okay railway reservation application, you can't access that from night 11:42, okay, early morning, okay, 12:20. Okay, early morning 12:20. That means almost for 40 minutes of time. Okay, that will be the maintenance stage. Okay, so during the time we can't reserve any tickets. Okay, so before that 11:40 we can reserve after 12:20 early morning we can access the banking system. So from that railway reservation systems also. So now when coming to the Tatkal facility, when it will be access accessible? 10 o'clock. That will be accessible from 11 o'clock. Okay, that will be for. The general tickets that will be 11 o'clock onwards and then for the ac class 10 30 onwards for ac class 10 30 onwards for the general okay 11 o'clock onwards before 10 30 we can't access that okay before 10 30 we can't access the feature is available inside the railway reservation system but that cannot be accessible before 10 30. from 10 30 onwards we can book that okay that car tickets for the ac class not for the general General tickets will only be reserved for from 11 o'clock onwards. Was only for the AC class 10 30 hours. So the features has been restricted to accessible during certain period of time only. Like the similar way, when coming to a Salesforce application, I would like to restrict the application during some period of time itself. From so and so time to so and so time only, the people can log in into the application. Outside of the time, it's the people can't log in. I would like to restrict. So in this case, Salesforce has given this option also that is called as login hours. Okay, login hours. By using this login hours, you can able to configure so that during what timings the people can log in into your Salesforce application that we can decide. Okay, clear? Now let's see. Let me explain that how can we configure that. Go to the login hours. We are having this login hours option. Click on edit button. Now we can specify from which time to which time you would like to access it. Sunday, I don't want to allow the people to log in because Sunday will be the holiday. Monday, for example, from morning 8 o'clock to evening 4 p.m. Tuesday, 8 o'clock to 4 p.m. 
and then Wednesday, 8 o'clock to 4 p.m. Thursday, 8 o'clock to 4 p.m. And the Friday, 8 o'clock to 4 p.m. Saturday, 8 o'clock to afternoon, 1 p.m. Okay, one. We can start with the back will be the half day. Okay, not full day. So on Saturday, they can able to log in between 8 to 1 p.m. Like that, we can able to configure. If you are configuring the system during this timing only, we can log in. Or else you can't log in into your application. Salesforce won't allow to log in. Okay, clear? Now, depends upon the requirement, we can able to configure during what timings the people can log in into your Salesforce application. Okay, understood the concept now? Next. Here, there is a common question in every interview, in every admin certification, 201 answer. Now, for example, my bank timings are morning at 8 o'clock to evening 4 o'clock. Now, so morning at 8 o'clock, I have logged into my system. I came to the bank, I have logged into the application. I have access application till 10 a.m. Okay, I have access application till 10 a.m. 10 a.m. I went for a tea break. Okay, tea break. I came by, I came back by 10 20 a.m. Okay, 10 20 a.m. I came back. I have logged into my system. Now I have access the application till 1 p.m. At 1 p.m. I went for the lunch break. Okay, at 1 o'clock, I went for the lunch. I came back by 2 p.m. 2 p.m. again, I have logged. Now, I have access the application till 3 p.m. 3 p.m. I went for a snacks break. Okay, I came back by 3.15. Okay, 3.15, I have logged into the application. I'm working on some features. I'm working on some features. Now the time is for Still I'm working. I'm in the middle of something. Now what will happen? Now, can I continue to access this application? Or will it close the application? Or will it give you a pop-up message that time, time is up? So please close the system. Or will it cancel my operation or what? I think it will pop up the information. Then what will happen in this case? Sir, we can see the application, but we can't uh, use it no. because the log in time is. Let's see. When coming to the four o'clock, even though the time is four o'clock, we can continue to access the application. System will not be getting signed out. You can continue to access the application, but the problem is from four o'clock onwards, your system will go into the read-only state. Okay, the system will go into the read-only state. That means no DML operations. No insertion, no updation, no deletion, no absurd, no match, nothing. DML operations will be getting prevented. The system will go into the read-only mode automatically by default. That's what, even though when you go to the banks, the banks will be having the time till, okay, 4.30, okay? Till 4.30, they will close that transaction by 3 o'clock only. Because from 3 o'clock onwards, the transaction posting will not be happening. Because the bank banking system will go into the read-only state, simply they will be generating some reports over here. They will bring the data from the database. They can see today how many accounts we have opened. Today, how many accounts we have closed. Today, how many deposits has been made. Today, how many loans has been applied. Today, how many loans has been dispersed. Everything they can able to generate some reports also. For that reason, the banking system should be closing the transaction posting after 3 o'clock afterwards. Okay, from morning 10 o'clock to okay, 3 o'clock only, we can do the transaction posting after 3 o'clock. System will go to the read-only state for the next one hour. They can access the application okay, in order to generate the reports also so that we can send these reports to the higher official people. So in this case here, they are going to be indicating the restriction time from which time to which time the people can log in. 
now even though i'm accessing the application in the middle of that application middle of the accessing these features if the suddenly the type is up salesforce won't give any pop up message it won't give any alert to you it won't sign out it will continue you to access the application but from for the black boards you can't perform any dml operation system will go into the read only state okay now for example at a 4 that e i have signed out my system I have logged. At four forty, I'm trying to be logged. At four forty p.m., I would like to log. Can I log in into my application now? No, because the time is already over. So from four o'clock onwards, you can't log in into the application again. Okay, you can't log in into the application again from four o'clock onwards. So in this case here, that's what I told you. By using Salesforce, we can build banking applications also. These kind of features are required only for the banking systems. So Salesforce has given all these features in the form of configuration. Just by using mouse clicks, we can able to configure depends upon the requirement. Depends upon your branch, we can configure the timings also. Branch to branch, city to city, they might be having some different timings will be available. So depends upon your branch, we can able to configure the timings also. Okay, clear now. So that they're indicating this okay, lagging hours and the lagging IP ranges also. This is a common question in every interview. Suppose we have configured some lagging hours from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So now I'm accessing the application. Now the time is 4 o'clock. What will happen? My system will sign out, or can I continue to access the application? Will it show the pop-up message or what? So it will allow us you to continue to access the application, but the DML operations will be getting prevented from that time onwards. We can't perform any DML operations inside your system. Okay, clear. Once you have signed out from there again, you can't log in into the application again. Next day morning, eight o'clock, we can log in. Okay. This is the way we can able to restrict the login hours also for your users. Clear? Next. Next one. For the banking systems, you can raise a question, sir, we are having some holidays are available. Second Saturday will be a holiday. There are some other national holidays are also available. And the festival holidays are also available. Then in this case, how can we configure? In order to configure those holidays, during the holidays timings, the users can't access my application. For that one, we can configure the holidays also. Okay, we can configure the holidays also. Just to search for the option holidays, now we can specify that. Now click on view button. Now we can specify the holiday name over here. Now, for example, I'm indicating some Dasara holidays. So now we can specify the timings over here. So now from which date to which date we can able to configure over here depends upon the requirement. So we can specify the timings also. If it is a half day, we can specify. If it is a full day, we can specify. Is it recurring holiday? Then we can specify depends upon your requirement over here. So now in this case, we can able to specify. Depends upon the requirement, we can able to specify from which date to which date we can configure. Like for example, if it is a Dasara holiday, we can able to specify the holiday name. That means what is the date over here. Depends upon the requirement, we can able to specify that date value on which day that Dasara will be having the holiday. So depends upon the requirement. Suppose, for example, if it is like a, some Christmas holiday. Christmas holiday. So now Christmas will be having the holiday every year on the same date. So the date will be fixed always every year. So in this case, we can configure recurring holidays. So now every year, yearly, okay, it will be indicating that. Okay, every year, now we will be having the date value over here. Every year we can specify on every December 25th. Okay, 25th. So now every year, okay, on December 25th will be the holiday over. So now we can specify. If you want to specify from which date to which date, we can able to configure. Depends upon the requirement because it is a fixed date. There are some holidays are available which are fixed dates are available. August 15th will be the holiday that will be fixed date. And then we are having October 2nd also fixed holiday. And then we are having some like some Christmas also, January 1st also. There are some fixed holidays are available, but the festival holidays will be keep on changing the dates also. 
one or two days or keep on differences. So at that time, we can configure your own holidays also depends upon the requirement. Okay. So that we can configure, configure the holidays also. During this holidays timing, the people can't log in into your Salesforce application. Okay. So all these options also we can able to configure. Depends upon your business requirement. Clear? So these are the various features that we can able to configure inside your profile. Through the profiles, we can grant the permissions on applications also, tabs also, objects also, operations also, fields also, page layouts, general permissions, custom permissions, session settings, password policies, Apex classes, visual force pages, login hours, login IP ranges, like that we can configure so many permissions inside the profile. Okay, clear? Next, one. the one more feature, the last feature of security, permission set. Permission set. So what do you mean by this permission set? What it indicates, okay, now let's see practically in this case. What did you understood with the word permission set? Sir, set nothing but collection and set, collection of settings and permissions. No. Permission set contains a group of permissions. Now, why should we go for this permission set? Now, let me explain. For example, assume that there is a small scenario. For example, I'm having this profiles are available. Like for example, take the users also. I'm having this users are available. Now for these users, we have assigned some profiles also. Let's see. Now there is a profile. So we have a profile is Profile. Now, in this profile, I'm granting the access on both standard and custom. No fine. That means this profile has been assigned to these two users, user one and the user two. The profile two has been assigned to the three people over here. So for the three people, we have assigned the same profile. For these three people, for the user three, user four, and the user five, for all these three people, we have assigned the same profile. In this profile level, okay, in this profile level, for the account object, I have granted some permission. I have granted create read permission create and read permission i have granted the permission card as create and read on the account object here inside the profile now tell me for the user 3 user 4 user 5 what level of access will be available on the account object create and read permission because whenever i'm going to be granting the permission in the profile level the same permissions will be applicable to all the users available inside my okay profile now for this user also for the user 3 it will be granting the permissions on account object with the read and the click. now for this user also it will be granting same read and click.
for this user also it is granting read and think okay clear up to this one whenever we are assigning the permissions inside the profile level same permissions will be applicable to all the users inside that profile now my requirement is for the user file along with this two profile two permissions read and create i want to grant okay edit and delete also how i want to grant edit and delete permission this should be applicable only to the user file not to all can i go inside the profile level inside the profile can i grant this permission edit and delete here now it will have what will happen in this case if i am granting the permission in the profile level this will be applicable mm -hmm. to all the user okay users. for the three users it will grant the permission but i don't want to grant the permission to all the three users i want to grant the permission only to that okay user five additionally that's it so in this case here if you want to grant some additional permissions to one or more users then we can use the help of permission set okay permission set in this case what we can do we can configure your permission set we can configure your permission set i'm creating a permission set over here in this permission set on this account object i'm granting the permission on edit and delete so once the permission set has been configured we can assign this permission set to this particular users now to whom you want to grant this permission i want to assign this permission to this particular user file so we can assign this permission set to this particular user itself clear now that means what what are the permissions we have granted inside the profile if you want to extend the permissions of a particular user then we can use the help of permission set okay now in this case observe this scenario so now profile will override the owd okay profile will override owd permissions permission set will override what Prof. Hmm. permission set will override profile okay profile because profile is granting only read and create permission permission set will override the profile it will be granting the edit and delete permissions also to this particular user group. Okay, so that's what here. Whenever we are granting the permissions to the user, grant very low level of access. Grant very less level of access. If requests keep on, we can able to extend the permissions also. Okay, if you are granting full permission initially, in future if you want to try to reduce that one, there is no options in Salesforce. In Salesforce, we are having the options to keep on extend. We can go to that OWD grant very low level of access. Keep on, we can extend with the help of sharing also. Profiles also, and then if through the profile we can able to grant some permission. If you want some more, we can extend through permission sets. But we can't reduce them here. We can keep on extend. That's what go from small to okay huge level of accesses. Now, so in this case we can create this permission set, and this permission set we can assign to the user. Okay. Now, for example, in future this is the same permission will be required for the user three also. Can I assign the same permission set? Yes. yes the same permission set can be get assigned to another user also so one permission set can be assigned to multiple users okay now in the entry point of view whenever they are asking this kind of question i want to grant some additional permission to the people then ask them you want to grant the permission to all the users inside the profile or you want to grant to only some specific users then based on their answer we can decide whether we can go with profile or permission set if the set i want to grant the permission to all the people then go with the help of what profiles if the set that i want to grant the permission to only some specific user then permission, permission. set simple okay user wise we can able to create permission sets okay now so once the permission set has been configured we can assign the permission set to the multiple users also then how can we differentiate the profile and the permission set basically permission set is also like as a profile it is also like as a profile what are the permissions we are granting through the profile same permissions we can grant through permission set also except two permissions one is login ip rate second one login hours 
except this login IP ranges and the login hours, rest all the functionalities we can grant through permission set also. So through permission set, we can grant the permissions uh, applications also, objects also, tabs also, fields also, operations on each and every object also, general permission, system permission, custom permission, Apex classes, visual first pages, everything we can grant except two permissions, login hours and login. Okay, clear now. So in this case, you are now tell me here, for example. Now, for this particular profile user, okay, for this user file, I want to grant the access on with a loan object also. Basically, for the loan object, we haven't granted any permission inside the profile. I want to grant the permission on loan object also. For this user file, what can I do? I want to grant the permission on loan object for this user file only. Hmm. Inside the permission set, can I grant? Then in this case, it will be applicable to this user three also. I want to allocate the permission only to the user file. Hmm? We can create another permission set. So create one more permission set, right? Now I'm going to be creating one more permission set now. I'm creating one more permission set. So this is a permission set two. Set. In this permission set two, on the loan object, I'm going to be granting the permission over here. Read, create, edit permission. I'm granting the permission. So now this permission set, I would like to assign to the user. To which user you would like to require, then you can able to grant the permission also. For example, I'm assigning this permission set over here to this particular user file. Okay, for this user file only, I'm assigning this permission. Understood the concept now? Now, now tell me, for one user, how many permission sets we can assign? One or more. Multiple. One permission set can be assigned to how many users? Multiple. What is this relation now? Many to many. many, okay. many, many, many. Means between this user and the permission set object, we have many to many association. One permission set can be assigned to multiple users, and one user can have multiple permission sets also. So we are having many to many association between these two okay, objects. Now, in order to implement this kind of many to many association, what we require? Junction, junction object. object. What is a junction object? Permission set assignment. What is this? What is the junction object? Permission set assignment. In relationship, in relationship concept already to right. no? Because permission set is not at all related to profile. It is related to user. Right. Hmm. What is the junction object? between user and the permission set objects. What is that junction object? Hmm. Permission objects. Hmm. Now all the permission sets are available in the permission set object. All the users are available in user object. Hmm. What is the junction object between these two? User permission. No. Or permission in user. Case, already we have discussed. If there is a junction object called as permission set assignment. Okay, permission set assignment is a junction object between user and the permission set object. Okay, between the user and the permission set object, we have a junction object called as permission set assignment. Okay, now, so now tell me here in the entry point of it's a common question. Difference between role and profile, already we know. Sometimes they will raise the question difference between role profile permission set then what we can say hmm. rolling is used to grant the permissions on only on records record level permissions we can grant profile is used to grant the permissions on what objects also applications also fields also features everything we can grant permission sets are also used to grant the permissions on the objects applications fields features and everything we can able to grant the permissions also. 
that facility will be available over here. Okay, now, so now in this case, for one user, how many roles we can assign? Only one. one. How many profiles we can assign? Only one. one. How many permission sets we can assign? Multiple, Multiple. also. Upon creating the user record, is the profile is mandatory? Yes. yes. Role is mandatory? No. no. Role is optional. Permission sets? Optional. Okay, permission set also optional. So basically, permission sets are nothing but the extensions for profile. Inside the profile level, what are the permissions that you have granted? If you want to extend the permissions for few users, then we can use the help of permission sets. Okay, so by using these permission sets also, we can grant the permissions on all the features, whatever we have inside your organization, except the two permissions. One is, okay, login IP ranges, and the second one is login hours. Except these two, we can grant all the permissions also over here. Okay, now. So now again, in this case, how can we do that? Okay, now let's see practically over here. Okay, now let's see how can we create the permission set. Now, for example, here. assume that I'm having this profile here. Let me go to the users. I have a profile that is called as CIS platform. So now in this profile, we are having three users are available. The same profile has been assigned to three users. Click on view users. Now it is indicating to which users this profile has been assigned. Customer user, manager user, testing user. These three people are using that same profile that is CIS platform profile. Now I'm opening the profile now. In this profile, for this account object here, I'm granting the permissions like only read and okay. I'm granting the permission only on read and create for my account object. And for the hiring manager object, I'm granting the permissions on only on read and create. Okay, read and create. So now for these three users. Okay, on the hiring manager object, they can able to create the records, they can able to see the records. Account records also they can create and they can see, but they can't modify the card delete. Okay, fine. Now let me save this profile. Save the profile. So now for the manager user, I want to grant edit and delete permissions on account object. What can it do? Hmm. We can create. Permission set. How to create the permission sets? Now let's see. Go to that quick find box, search for the option permission set. Click on permission set. So now create a new permission set. Click on new button, create a new permission set. Now I would like to create the permission set over here. Now I would like to specify now grant permission permission on account edit and delete permission on account object i'm giving the permission set label grant edit and delete permission on account object i'm creating a permission set specify the permission set label and the description now click on save it. Just the permission set has been created. Now we can grant the permission. What permissions you would like to grant? You want to grant the permissions on applications, connected apps, objects, and the fields, and the operations, and the app permissions, OPEX classes, user force pages, external data sources, flows, named credentials, custom permissions, system permissions also, custom metadata types, everything we can able to grant the permission so now except login numbers and login repeaters now i want to grant the permissions on objects go to the object settings select the object name and what object you would like to grant the permission account object click on accounts so now what is the permission you would like to grant edit and delete. so click on edit button here Select that permission. Okay, edit permission, delete permission. 
If you want to grant the permissions on any of the fields over here, then you can grant the permissions on those fields also. It depends upon the requirement which you are able to decide. Now all the six checkboxes will be available. I'm granting the permissions on edit and delete permission inside this account object here for this permission set. Now click on save. So now my permission set has been created. Like the similar way, we can grant the permissions on other objects also inside your Salesforce R. Like for example, I'm going to the hiring manager object also. Click on edit button. Grant the permissions for these people over here, visible. I want to grant read and create. So like that multiple permissions you can able to place inside this. Now, click on save. So now we have granted the permissions on hiring manager object also. So once the permission set is ready, then how can we present this permission set to the user? To whom you want to grant these permissions? To which user? Manager user. Okay, for the manager user, I will take this out. So go to that users. Go to the users. Go to that manager user. Okay, this is the manager user. Is Click on this manager user. When you come down, you will be having a section called as permission sets assignments section. Go to that permission sets assignments section. Click on edit assignment. Select the permission set which you would like to assign. These are the various standard permission sets has been given by Salesforce. We have created our own permission set also grant, edit and delete permission on account object. Now select the permission set. Click on save. Clear? Click on save button. So now for this particular manager user, we have granted some additional permission by using this permission set. Suppose if your user is accessing additional features than the profile, then that is because of permission sets. Okay. Come to that user record, go to the permission set assignments section. We can check what permission sets have been assigned to the user. Here we can able to verify inside this. Clear? Understood the concept now? Now let's test the functionality. Go to the users. Go to that customer user. On the account object, they're having only read it. Click on new. I'm creating an account record. Test account record. Now, so they are able to create the record. They can see the record also. Read and create is available. Now, tell me, do they have any edit button, delete button? No, they can't modify. They can't delete. because that for the profile they are having only read and create permissions. Okay. Now, let me go back to the manager user. Now. Because manager user is also for the same profile. Login to the manager user now. Click on new button. I'm giving this record. Now. Test the record too. Fax value. Industry. Now. So now this user is also able to create the record they can see. So now tell me this user can able to modify. Yes, he can delete the record. Yes, so he can do all these operations also. Because through permission set, we have granted some additional permission to this particular user. He can able to delete the record also from this object as it is. Okay, even though all the people are belong to the same profile, for one user we have granted some additional permissions, okay, with the help of permission set. So, permission sets are used to extend the permissions of that profile. Okay, clear? Understood the concept now? So, these are the various features are available as part of your security concept. Okay, clear up to this one? So now let's come to the climax part. We'll see the complete well overview. We'll see that. So now let's see. 
in the interview point of view, they will raise a common question. Could you please describe about Salesforce security model? Then what we can see? Do we need to explain, okay, are there 23 topics over here? No. Then what we can say? We have to give the information in brief. Now, then what we can do? So in Salesforce, Salesforce security has been divided into five different levels. First one, system level security. Second one, application level security. Third one, object level security. Fourth one, field level security. Fifth one, record level security. These are the five levels of securities are available in Salesforce. Okay, now let's see. system level security. Object level security. Sorry, this application. Object level security. Field level security. Record level security. These are the five levels are required. System level, application level, object level, field level, record level. Okay, done. So now tell me how can we enable system level security? How to achieve this? How can we indicate who can log in into my account? That means who can log in into my app? When the users can log in? From where the users can log in, that we can decide. Okay, then how can we do this? Hmm. In this case, profile. That means here, especially, we can specify login IP ranges and then login others. And along with that, we can have one more option SSO. That means single sign off. Okay, single sign off. So in order to restrict that, okay, the people to log in into your Salesforce are, we are using the help of this login IP ranges, login numbers. Application level, what applications the people can able to access? How can we decide? So profile. With the, what applications the user can access? By using which features we can grant this permission? OWD is only for records. What applications the user can access that we can decide? Where we can specify? Profile only, sir. Profile. Profiles and permission Profile. sets. Okay. Through with the help of profiles and permission sets, we can grant. Object level permissions. What objects the user can access? What operations the user can perform on each and every object? How can we grant this permission by using what? Profile. Profile permission set. Profile set, permission set. Right. Next. Field level. What fields the user can able to access? How can we decide that? Hmm. Profiles. Record level. Role press. Role, sir. Then role. Organization level access can be done with the help of 
OWD, roles, manual sharing, sharing rules, Apex sharing, profiles, permission sets. In profile permission set, what features are available to grant the permissions on the records? In profiles and permission set, what permissions are available to that? Sir, six, create, read, edit, delete. Now, record level security. On my records, I would like to grant the access to that all the people. Then for that one, we are using view all, modify all permission. Inside the profile and the permission set, we have this view all and the modify all permission. Through that, we can grant the permissions on record level security. Okay, these are the five levels of security that we have. So if anybody asks a question in the entry point of view, could you please explain the sales for security and you can explain these are the five levels are available. Don't give that information completely. Just you can explain system level, application level, object level, field level, record level. That's it. Stop it. Then they will raise a question. How to grant that system level security? Then you can explain. Login IP ranges, login hours, and SSO. How to grant the permissions on Okay, application. Then you can say profile and permission set. That's it. Stop. That. They will raise a question: What is profile? What is permission set? Then you can give the information. How to grant the permission on records? Then you can say OWD roles sharing concept. Also profiles and permission set. Then they will raise a question: What is sharing feature? Then you can explain what exactly sharing. Types of sharing mechanisms, how to share that, and then what is the difference between that? We can explain them like that. We have to give the answer to the people. Okay, don't give the complete information at a time, just to give you a brief information to them. Let them ask some more questions on that part. Okay, clear. Clear. This is the concept of security in Salesforce. And in tomorrow's session, we'll see the concept of business processes. What exactly the business processes that is also called as a record types, we'll see practically in tomorrow's session. Tomorrow we'll be having the session at 10 o'clock. You can not at 9. But we'll be having the session by 10 o'clock. 10 to 12 30 or 10 to 1, we'll be having the session tomorrow. Okay. So please be available for tomorrow. Sunday will be the off. From Monday onwards, we are having developing sessions. Okay. Thank you.